Fellow YouTuber Natural Hypertrophy recently called power building an abomination. I disagree. Welcome back. Now real but non-medical Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. And today we're talking about power building. Let me break it down for you. First, what is power building? And secondly, why do people use it? Power building is a training method almost always used by people who don't compete in bodybuilding or powerlifting, who just really want to enjoy training and get a really good amount of muscle growth and strength gains. What does power building look like? Well, usually they'll focus on the main three lifts, the squat, the bench, the deadlift, getting stronger in those to some degree, right? That could be one rep max strength. It could be three rep max strength. It could be more general strength, around five rep max strength. But generally, they also want to see their squat, bench, and deadlift improve in terms of strength. However, they also want to get a lot of hypertrophy, usually all over their body, which is kind of what separates them from powerlifters. One, they don't necessarily care about competing, and two, they also want growth in other areas, like their back, like their biceps, like potentially their calves. Sorry, Omar. And because of this, here's what their training sessions usually look like. They start with some variation of the squat, bench, or deadlift for relatively low reps, usually between one and six reps. They might do a squatting variation, a benching variation, and then maybe the rest of their session is dedicated to hypertrophy work. Typically, the rest of their session as a hypertrophy work is pretty hypertrophy optimized. They might do relatively higher reps, they might do a variety of rep ranges, they might pick exercises that are more stable, that allow them to get a better stretch. Essentially, the aim of power building is to get a good deal of muscle growth and a good deal of strength without competing and while just enjoying your training. Having a kind of natural flow to your sessions as far as starting a session a little bit heavier, doing those heavy lifts on the squat bench deadlift, and then moving on to hypertrophy work that's going to help you put on size. Now to get one thing out of the way immediately, is power building the best approach for gaining size? No. That's bodybuilding. Is powerbuilding the best approach to make you a better powerlifter? No, that's powerlifting. However, powerbuilding is basically never used to make you the best in terms of size or in terms of strength or in terms of competing in bodybuilding or competing in powerlifting. That was never the aim. The aim was always to get a blend of both and to just enjoy your training. Your goals might not neatly conform into those of a bodybuilder or those of a powerlifter, and that's exactly what power building is for. But alongside mentions of things like spider physiques and other strange notions, natural hypertrophy has called power building an abomination. And so within this video, while trying to remain pretty civil, let me respond to some of those critiques. First, natural hypertrophy makes the claim that weight building, the combination of weightlifting and bodybuilding, or strong building, the combination of strong man and bodybuilding, would be just as good, so why the obsession with power building? Let me touch on weight building first. It's unlikely weight building would be as good as power building for hypertrophy for about four distinct reasons. Reason number one, weightlifting has a pretty strong technical component. You'll often fail lifts because your technique wasn't perfectly on point. For hypertrophy, this isn't great. Whereas powerlifting, with relatively slower movement velocities, allowing you to get a little bit closer to failure, is a lot better. Lifts also aren't as technical. That brings me to my second point. In weightlifting, you have very few eccentric contractions. After the lift is over, you typically just drop the weight. And eccentrics, as we know from the research, are actually fairly important for hypertrophy. Reason number three. From the research we have, weightlifting may or may not have higher injury rates than powerlifting. And so when you're looking for something to complement bodybuilding training, maybe powerlifting is a little bit less injurious. The same applies to strong building or combining strongman with bodybuilding training. Strongman does seem to have notably higher injury rates than powerlifting. Finally, as far as strong building is concerned, many strongman exercises are isometric contractions, which again, miss out on benefits of eccentric contractions. There is also a lot of strongman exercises that are typically limited by cardiovascular ability than actual hypertrophy effect. And so when we're talking about combining two different disciplines that allow you to get a good amount of strength, but also a good amount of hypertrophy. Powerlifting lends itself a little bit better to gaining size than either weightlifting or strongman, and specifically with lower injury rates. The second claim I've seen made by natural hypertrophy and other people is that the squat bench deadlift are really not great exercises for hypertrophy, and that better alternatives might be in this case the push-up or the dip instead of the bench, the hack squat instead of the squat, and the RDL instead of deadlift. By and large, I do agree with this. 
I think the push-up and dip are great for chest and tricep hypertrophy. I think the RDL is better than a deadlift, typically. The hack squat, however, doesn't quite compare to a regular squat. The hack squat, on account of how the movement is set up, with the load being directly above the hips, likely doesn't do a great job of growing your glutes, nor your adductors, or even, potentially, your lower back. The squat, low bar or high bar, does a great job growing the quads, the gluteus maximus, the adductor magnus, and even potentially the lower back. The hack squat simply doesn't do this. More importantly though, when it comes to replacing the bench with a push-up or a dip, or the squat with a hack squat, there's a psychological motivation component. Most people get motivated and gain some self-efficacy by seeing other people achieve greater things than themselves. And really, how often can you compare yourself to someone stronger than you on the hack squat? Are there really that many people around you doing five reps on the hack squat that you can compare yourself to? Is there a sport centered around hack squatting from which you can draw inspiration as to how much stronger you could get, how much harder you can push? The odds are there isn't. And so the psychological motivation component, the enjoyment component is often a lot lower with movements like the hack squat. Next, natural hypertrophy refers to many buzzwords as to why powerlifting might be worse. He mentions central nervous system fatigue, stimulus to fatigue ratio, less tendon strain, better range of motion. Now, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have citations for any of these things, certainly not central nervous system fatigue, stimulus to fatigue ratio, tendon strain, and I don't think he really understands range of motion. He's denounced length and partials before. I think we all sort of agreed with the fact that the negative was most important because it's what the muscle lengthens. And so the lengthened portion of the movement and of the range of motion is also most important. And from that was birthed the concept of lengthened partials. So lengthened partial is in reality the love child of something like a, like a weird cluster set, rest pose, plus like biomechanics, because it entails essentially that you're going to do your set, and when you are done with your set and you can no longer hit full range of motion, you're going to do partial reps, in that portion of the range of motion where the muscle is lengthened, so at the end of the range of motion. But I would be happy to have any citations that he has on hand. But my hunch is, these are just some buzzwords that a lot of people use, mistakenly, to justify their training choices. Sometimes it's good to have a movement with a shitty resistance curve because it forces you to fight certain st uh, through certain sticking points that are going to then be very, very challenging for the muscle. Next, natural hypertrophy makes the weird claim that sumo deadlifts only exist because they allow you to shorten the range of motion and as a result, lift more weight. Putting aside the fact that about 50% of lifters, those in the higher weight classes or heavier weight classes typically, deadlift more conventional than sumo, the idea that sumo deadlifts are less range of motion than conventional stems from a pretty heavy misunderstanding of range of motion. And I can talk about this because that's kind of my PhD, you know, Dr. Milo Wolf. Range of motion should mostly be viewed as the degree of angular motion at each individual joint during an exercise, as opposed to the movement of the bar, right? Yes, the movement of the bar is a little bit lesser during a sumo deadlift compared to a conventional deadlift, but as far as hypertrophy is concerned and as far as joint angles are concerned, you get more knee extension range of motion at the knee, right, during a sumo deadlift versus a conventional deadlift you get about the same hip flexion range of motion during a sumo deadlift as a conventional. And so, while there's less range of motion in terms of how far is the bar moving, as far as actual joint range of motion is concerned, the two lifts really aren't that dissimilar. Next, natural hypertrophy makes this claim that powerlifting or powerlifting doesn't have any methodology. My question is, if you're not going to compete, you're training for fun, you want a good blend of general strength and size, why do you need a super specific methodology? There really isn't any super compelling evidence in the first place that periodization plays a large role for strength gains and certainly not for hypertrophy. So why would they need super intricate periodization when they could just get a good amount of size and strength training as they currently do? For example, why would you need to taper and why would you need to peak and spend several weeks on this that you could be spending actually training instead when you're just maxing out for the fun of it, right? You could just go into the gym and max out Will you perform your best? No. But equally, will you have to go through two or three weeks of weird training and or deloading slash tapering in order to get your best performance and you're not even competing? No, you won't. And in general, this trend of speaking about power builders themselves, as if he has a few power builders in mind he really hates, instead of power building as a concept, continues. Where he says, power builders don't put any effort into accessories, blah, blah, blah. Again, it just seems like hating on the people more so than the method. You can absolutely put effort into accessories as a power builder. I know many people that do, 
So let's try and focus on the concept rather than the people. He then claims that all these Palo Alto's have spider mode physiques. First of all, that's a completely insane term. Second of all, the impact of the exercise order on hypertrophy really isn't that clear from the research. Just because you do your arm work or your back work after your squatting or benching work doesn't seem to say that you'll necessarily see much less hypertrophy than if you did it first. So the idea that you could just do your arm work first in the session and get a lot more hypertrophy and avoid the, ooh, the spider mode physique, that just doesn't seem to be true based on the research we have. Furthermore, by doing some of your compound lifts first, especially for example, a squat for at least five reps, you might actually be putting on more size overall. In bodybuilding specifically, there's kind of two main factors here, right? There's conditioning, but that's besides the point. But there's also muscularity and symmetry. In terms of muscularity, training your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, your pecs, your triceps, as you would during powerlifting first in a session, is going to really emphasize the X taper, right? That X frame that is really prized in bodybuilding. Likewise, as far as symmetry goes, it provides a nice blend of lower body and upper body as far as providing a nice shape. He also puts forth this idea that you need to isolate every single muscle group in your body if you're power building or bodybuilding. The truth is, you don't. If you want to compete in bodybuilding, would you be well advised to actually isolate a lot of the major muscle groups? Yeah, probably. But the point here is, power builders don't necessarily care about their calves. Shout out Omar Yusuf. Maybe they just want to grow muscle overall, enjoy their training, get a little bit stronger, and that's it. Not everyone needs to min-max every single muscle group. Natural hypertrophy then makes the demonstrably false claim that the hypertrophy rep range is between three and 15 repetitions. We have data showing that doing sets of three is far less efficient than doing, say, sets of 10. In fact, doing seven sets of three with three minutes of rest was equivalent for hypertrophy to doing three sets of 10 with 90 seconds rest. Doing those triples took the people 70 minutes. Doing those sets of 10, those three sets, took people 17 minutes and they saw the same growth. And so, yeah, sure, if you're happy to spend five times or four times the amount of time in the gym, be my guest, do triples. But there's a good chance that both as far as time efficiency and as far as how much fatigue each set causes versus how much hypertrophy it gives you, doing sets of three really shouldn't be part of the hypertrophy rep range. Based on the research we have, the true hypertrophy rep range is between five and 50 repetitions. Finally, doing those sets of three in your training is probably just gonna bang you up a little bit more. So just as a broad recommendation, I don't think you should recommend sets of three for hypertrophy. Natural hypertrophy goes on to misunderstand intensity, saying that a lot of influencers say, oh, you need to train really intensely for a powerlifter, but not so intensely for a bodybuilder. That's either a straw man or just displays a lack of understanding what intensity means in a sports science context. Intensity in sports science refers to percentage of one rep max with them lifting, right? And so, yeah, bodybuilders don't need to train with as much intensity. Powerlifters need to train with high intensities, aka high weights, in order to be specific to the sport. But bodybuilders or people interested in gaining size, they don't need to do that. Finally, natural hypertrophy just refers to anecdotes from silver era and bronze era bodybuilders saying, you know, they didn't train with heavy weights. They, they, they focused on uh, hypertrophy rep ranges and those good movements like the hack squat, etc. You can use anecdotes to any level. I know plenty of power builders that are bigger than natural hypertrophy. Does that make power building better than pure hypertrophy training? No, not for gaining size. But that's the point of this video. Power building is a good approach if you want to gain size and also want to gain strength. You might gain about 80 or 90% of the potential size and strength you could gain if you were to simply dedicate yourself entirely to one pursuit or the other. So it gives you a really good blend of both. And more importantly, this is for people who aren't competing in either powerlifting or bodybuilding, or who just want to enjoy their training and structure it as they wish to. Dogging on power building is really not constructive. And I think more importantly, people should train as they please, especially if there are no competitive endeavors. If you want to optimize your physique, train for pure hypertrophy, talk about things like spider physique, be my guest, that's totally fine. But some people just want to enjoy their training. Takeaways from the video. First, power building is a fun way to get most of your size and strength gains you can get maybe about 90%. If you want to optimize, optimize. Train purely for hypertrophy or purely for strength. But if you find it fun and you're happy with these trade-offs, absolutely go for it. If you're not concerned with competing or maximizing muscle growth or maximizing strength gains, just take this approach. Enjoy it. And I'll see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace. The goals of power building are to gain... I'm going to shoot myself now.
How the fuck does one make this stay up? The vibes here are not immaculate. I'm going to tell you that now. My good friend Natural Hypertrophy be like, Ooh, pal, building, uh, we speak French. I am not French, uh, but uh, I am a Frenchman. <laughs>